we're going to have a short break after this. But um, when I, and, and this is this is the final presentation before the coffee break, right, Mariah? Right? Your piece. Do you? Here's the mic. Okay. Lillian, you want to use that one? Then you can move around. Okay. So we'll, we'll have a we'll have a coffee break Switching after off. this. Okay. But um, what I want to have a look at, we were talking about cultural context. Sue did, Bianca did. We have the laws, but does the law apply? To what extent is it difficult to apply the law? So in my 15 minute or so presentation, in preparing for this, I did a literature survey of the literature, the research is already in Malaysia on maternity protection. So I'm going to go through what I found. And this will set the context for you, your knowledge, when you go out to interview. For Malaysian ECRs, it probably confirms your knowledge and experience of maternity protection practice in this country. But for UK researchers, this will give you a flavor of the context in Malaysia, okay? Now, I don't like this, <laughs> okay? So I'm going to stick to this. So, okay, let's have a look at the cultural context. Firstly, and I'm sure everybody already knows what culture is, okay? Culture is the deeply embedded and resilient values, beliefs, goals, ways of life which are held in common among members of a particular society which is passed from one generation to the next. So, I want to look at what values we hold in Malaysia about women. And ECRs in Malaysia, if I'm correct, give me a nod, yeah? Or clap your hands so I know I'm not wrong, but I'm sure I'm not wrong. <laughs> so, what are the values that we Malaysians hold about women in the home, women in society, women in the workplace, women in politics? Now, I'm Malaysian, so I feel qualified to say that I read a lot in the newspapers, on the internet, about how advanced women in Malaysia are. I'm sure we are. I would like to consider myself as an advanced woman. But really, we aren't. Because we are held back by a lot of uh, values in a patriarchal society. So we subscribe to Asian values. We accept our role in society is hierarchical, okay? Now, I'll come on to that. Thank you very much, okay? Thank you very much. I'll come on to that, but first of all, I want to tell you about the law. The law sounds very nice. Now, our maternity rights are found in the Employment Protection Act of 1955. Specifically, section 37 and set to section 44A, in other words, part four of the act, okay? Now, I'm a lawyer by background, as is Norida, and I'm sure Norida, you'll be talking about the legal provisions, so I'm not gonna tread on your toes. What I'm going to say is, there are laws protecting maternity rights in Malaysia. In fact, here they are. Maternity leave, 60 days, but only the first five children. 90 days now, okay. So 90 days, not only, only in the public sector. Yes. The private sector is still 60 days. Women are entitled to protection under the Act, irrespective of the level of wages. Now, Malaysians, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this was only a recent improvement in the law. Because previously, you had to earn $2,000 a month before maternity protection is extended to you. Now, you are protected. 1,500, even, okay, 1,500. You are protected against dismissal during maternity leave, and female employees are entitled to maternity allowance. Now, there is a national breastfeeding policy, and this was in 1993, but there is no specific provision in the law about whether or not women have a right to breastfeed in the place, in the workplace, okay? Now, this is a government policy, and all lawyers know it is a policy, it is not the law, and therefore, you, it's not enforced in the workplace. It's a policy we like, 
breastfeeding, but very little provision is made about how this breastfeeding is carried out in practice. Okay, thank you. So, again, with childcare, we support childcare. The uh, government uh, on the internet says that we encourage childcare, we encourage employers to provide childcare, but again, there's no statutory recruitment for employers or the government to provide childcare facilities or reimburse childcare costs for working women. So this is the reality that women in Malaysia face in the workplace. What does the literature say? Now I spent a good few days looking for literature to paint a cultural, contextual uh, perspective of maternity in Malaysia. I didn't find very much. I then looked at the government websites, the Ministry of Employment, didn't find very much. Then I looked at newspapers, okay? And there are some things which I found. So there are quite a few of this, and Malaysian ECRs, UK ECRs, you don't have to copy these down because I'll make my presentation available so people can take them home, okay? Now, I put these in quotes because it's not my work. This is what I found as a result of looking on the internet or doing a literature survey. People accept the hierarchical order in which everybody has a place. Women are subordinate to men. This is the cultural context. Many women themselves internalize the belief that men are hierarchically superior. Gender division of labor in society, so very clear demarcation about what men do and what women do. Malaysian is yes, I'm listening out for thee, okay? Society's expectations that women should be able to balance work and family commitments without support being given. Traditional belief that women are homemakers while men are the breadwinners of the family. Due to traditional gender ideology, husbands do not generally share household responsibilities, which increase <laughs> working mothers' challenges in their family. Pardon? Did I hear this? <laughs> Extreme interpretations of Islam reinforce the belief that women are secondary to men. The media itself maintains conservative ideas about women's roles, continuing to perpetuate their marginalization. So on TV, you will see women staying at home, taking care of children, taking care of dependents, while the men go out to work in their Mercedes or BMW. Am I not right? Yeah. Yes. While many women are now employed, they are still expected to be responsible for the family and to maintain the traditional perception of a woman, of a woman, okay? So women are supposed to juggle work life and family life and be the ideal mother as well as a worker. But there is no support structures in place. Gender wage differentials are prevalent. Waged work, <coughs> women's work is considered secondary their main duties are in the home, and women are paid less because they are perceived as less skilled, less flexible because they have to take care of their family and children, and because of this hierarchical society that we belong to, women possess lower leadership potential. Okay? Now, I'm sure Noraida at some point uh, will talk about their Beatrice case. Here, the uh, air stewardess was dismissed, okay, due to pregnancy issues. I'm not going to go to that because I'm sure this will come up in the honey time, talking about this in our, yes. in our networking dinner. So um, remember this case. This case is the death knell for protection, for maternity protection in Malaysia. <coughs> the court took a real step back, okay? Only for Malaysian Airlines. Only for Malaysian Airlines. Because this is union. Because we we have a new case which is no Fadila. No Fadila. Okay. So we we will.
we'll be able to look at these two cases in more detail. What else did I find? Few employers implement family-friendly policies such as flexi-time, part-time, working from the home, and childcare facilities. Now, I couldn't really find any literature at all on small or medium companies. These are for large companies, and even in large companies, this is the position. Few employers implement family-friendly policies such as flexi-time, part-time, working from the home, and childcare facilities. Few employers willing to retain positions for women who leave because they are pregnant and give birth and want to come back. Um, the flexi time, yeah, I think um, this is a very uh, an issue that women's groups are not um, are very wary. Uh, sorry, sorry. <coughs> Yeah, I just want to caution because this is um, this is something that Ministry of Women has been trying to push, and women's groups are very wary about this idea because pushing it without changing certain other elements would mean pushing just women to home with no support, with no insurance system backing, blah blah blah. So we look at this very warily and very cautious. But what do they mean when they talk about flexi time and part time, and why must it apply only to women and not to men? Okay. Right, I'm going to push on. Majority of corporations in Malaysia do not offer family-friendly facilities, nursing rooms, childcare centers, or flexible work arrangements. Employers have opposed extending maternity leave beyond 60 days, arguing that an additional 30 days would lead to huge losses for businesses. Maternity issues are a private matter. It is not a matter for the workplace. Okay? So I'll go through a few more, but you are welcome to have this uh, presentation to take away with you. Despite government encouragement, low take up by employers of flexible working arrangements, career break schemes, paternity leave, on site crash, nurseries, and developing awareness of the specific needs of women. Increasing reliance on domestic health. So we have a huge uh, a number of families employing Indonesian maids, uh, Filipino maids, so that mothers can go to work. Okay? Women leaving the labor force despite high education and qualification. I think women exit the labor force as young as 30 years old <coughs> to take care of their families because there is inadequate support. Unsympathetic approach of employers towards maternity protection, forcing them to rely on mothers mothers-in-law, maids, friends to take care of the children when they go to work. Couple more, the lack of maternity protection policies forces women into particular types of employment, informal sector, low wage, low skill, so that they can stay at home to fulfill their responsibilities. Discrimination, negative attitudes, stereotypes of women leading to fewer opportunities and slower career progress. Government introduces legislation, but law is either unclear or not enforced. Women are empowered with rights through registration, but implementation is weak. Government needs to be more proactive, but government itself often steers a male-oriented <coughs> Lack of equal participation of women in the political process, low numbers of women in the federal cabinet. So the list goes on and on, but I think you have a certain sense of the cultural context in which we Malaysian women live in. Okay? <coughs> so these are the challenges for maternity protection advocates in Malaysia, and these are challenges for you. There are legal structures which are present, and of course Malaysia says that we comply with international conventions, we comply with what the international community expects of our women, but due to social, cultural, and political constraints, women are denied full benefits of maternity protection, and our practice in Malaysia continue to fall behind international benchmarks. Finally, how do we move forward now, Sue Bianca has been uh, stressing taking into account 
the cultural context. And for me, as a Malaysian woman, I don't think I could stress that more. When you go out to do your research during this workshop, yeah, you cannot simply go out thinking, let's have a look at how the law can be implemented. That's a side issue. You need to think about the cultural context in which we live, and you have to work from that, okay? So we need to recognize how the laws, culture, social norms, treat women in this country and then move from there to advance maternity protection for women. One last thing before coffee break, okay? Think about small major companies. They form the backbone of our economy in Malaysia, okay? Now, there's hardly any research. I'm not saying it doesn't take place. I'm not saying there are no good employers in small medium-sized companies. What I'm saying is, we need to know much more. Thank you.